By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a nice budget battle for you. We're both playing with budget decks. I am playing with a Flying Elementals deck. It's mono red and it's completely four and black border just for fun. But you can uh, you can build this pretty cheap and uh, it's built around a flying carpet, believe it or not, and gravity sphere. But more about that in the deck deck section. And I'm playing against Yoop and he's bringing an Urnum Geddon deck to the table. And it's completely made out of reprints. They're not even dual lands in here. And the deck works surprisingly well. So I'm really looking forward to battle against him to show you these two beautiful budget decks. Now, before I start with the deck deck section of this video, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go to the games first. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the game action. And here I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm starting with the deck of my opponent, Urnum Geddon. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop. So this is Urnum Geddon, right? This is a classic build. And the cool thing about this deck is a lot of cards have been reprinted, thus making it possible to make a very cheap, affordable version. I mean, look at this pile of cards. We've got cards from Revised. No, actually no Revised. There's just 4th Edition in here and Chronicles. That's it. And the cool thing is, it works because what does this deck want to do? It's quite simple. You want to ramp up in this case with your Felwer Stones and your Lanora Elves and you want to play out aggressive creatures quickly. Savannah Lines, Urnum Jinn of course, 4, 5 for 4 mana. Maybe even your Sarah Angel if you've got the right ramp. And then when those creatures are on the board, you're going to cast your Armageddon, annihilate the lands on both sides, meaning your opponent cannot do anything against the creatures you've got on the board. You turn them sideways, you win the game. And one of the things that makes this deck really good as well is that you have those white control elements. You've got your balance, you've got your disenchant, you've got your swords. So if there's a problem, white will fix it, right? I mean, white is so good in fixing problems in old school. It's it's probably the best color at doing so. And yes, that means better than blue. Blue is great at countering, but solving a problem, go to white. White can do it. An interesting thing about this build, by the way, on the side of Yoop is the inclusion of the 4 GM day tomes. You would think, okay, if I'm going to destroy all the lands with Armageddon, maybe a land tax would be a, an interesting inclusion. But he's really going for the Gem Daytome. He's really going for the control. So we'll kind of see how that's going to work out. That's something that he put in his build that you don't see a lot in these Urnum uh, Geddon Bruce. Okay, so this is the deck of Yoop. Now let's take a look at my deck. And here you see my deck, Flying Elementals. So Flying Elementals is built around two cards. We've got Flying Carpet that can give target creature flying. And we have the uh, enchantment, enchant world from Legends, Gravity Sphere, that says all creatures lose flying. So when you play Gravity Sphere, all creatures lose flying. And then I can use my flying carpet to give a creature flying and I can fly over my opponent's forces because they all lost flying. So the funny thing here is what I want to do is put, of course, a fire elemental or an earth elemental on that little tiny carpet and kind of hit him with it. You know, that is the dream of the deck. But there's also a plan B in the deck and that's built around Sword of the Ages and Wall of Fire. So Wall of Fire, of course, is a wall for two red and one. That's an 05, but for one red mana, it's got a fire breathing ability. I can give it plus one plus O. Oh. So if I've got a lot of mountains, I can make a really powerful wall, right? I have a lot of power. Uh, then I have Sword of the Ages. Sword of the Ages is an artifact from Legends for six. So it's pretty, pretty steep to cast, comes into play tapped. When it's untapped, I can tap and sack it and then sack an X amount of creatures and then deal damage to any target equal to the uh, power of those creatures. So if I have a wall of fire and if, let's say, I've got 10 red mana, let's just say a crazy number, I can make my wall of fire a 10-5, sack it to the Sword of the Ages and deal 10 damage to my opponent. I mean, that's just really, really cool. So I've got two plans here, right? I can put my elementals on a carpet or I can kill my opponent with a huge wall of fire and a Sword of the Ages combo. Of course, Sword of the Ages also works with any other creatures. I and mean, Fire Elemental is a 5-4, so that can deal 5 damage on its own with the Sword of the Ages. Remember, with Sword of the Ages, I can sack one creature, two creatures, as many creatures as I want. So, I mean, the sword is really a good way uh, to go to victory as well. Now, because the deck is a little bit slow, and when you're looking for specific pieces in the deck, you need to make sure that you have a lot of like security, you know, that you don't die before that happens. So that's why I'm playing with two mazes of if. And actually also that's the function of the wall of fires to kind of keep my opponent at bay so that it can like get all the components that I need. 
And just like my opponent, I'm also playing with Jam Day Tomes. I think when you're playing budget, one of the, the, the most budget-friendly ways to draw cards is through your Jam Day Tomes. You know, they're reprinted and revised in 4th edition. So you can get, you, it's really easy to get cheap copies. And it's a great card in old school. And drawing cards is important, especially when you're playing a control deck, like control combo deck like I'm playing. Actually, it's not really control, is it? But you know what I mean. It's more like a combo deck, I guess, that I'm playing. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. It's a lot of fun to play, so I'm really looking forward to uh, to checking out this match and seeing how it's going to do against Urnum Geddon. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. I believe it's Yoop on the play here with this Urnum Geddon deck, starting here with a Savannah Alliance passing the turn, and I'm playing a Mono Red Flying Elemental, so I'm playing Flying Carpet and Gravity Sphere together to try to uh, fly over my opponent with Elemental. Starting just with one red, passing the turn. I think the only one drop in the deck is a Soul Ring. Couldn't find that, I guess. Going to 18, by the way, there's also a Mishra's Factory being caused by Yoop. So a lot of early pressure from him already could hit me for four next turn. There's also a Factory tapping two. Are we gonna see a Felwer Stone? Okay, there's a Felwer Stone. I really need this to kind of ramp up, see if I can play out my Elementals a little bit early here because there's so much pressure. He can attack me here for five because it can pump the factory. That's exactly what he does. Look at that already on 13. This is not great. Can I find something here? I guess if I have a second red, it could cast a wall of fire. That would be quite nice. Okay, there is the red. Let's see what I can do. Maze of If would be handy as well. Putting it there in the front, kind of signaling that I can animate it if he chooses to attack. Of course, it can be a good blocker for the Savannah Alliance. But of course, there's always the risk that uh, my opponent has a Disenchant or a Sword Stepping 2 here. Another Felwer Stone. Okay, that means next turn it can potentially cast an Elemental, but uh, it is quite risky. And with risky, I mean, if I animate my, my factory now to block, for example, the line, and if then my opponent has a disenchant, it's a problem because I, I end lose a creature, but also lose a land. Get a little bit further behind here. I'm on 13, Yoop's still on 20, of course. So he's really the aggressor in this deck. I hope that he doesn't have an Armageddon. I guess he doesn't, animating the factory here. Attacking with both, so I wonder if I'm gonna animate my own factory. Okay, there's a Shatter. That's actually pretty nice. Didn't think about that. So the Shatter is going to kill the Factor. I'm going to take two. Going to go to 11. So the Shatter is a pretty good answer to the Factory. The thing is with Factories is that they're very vulnerable as soon as they become a creature because they're an artifact, a creature, and a land all in one. So there are a lot of cards that can remove those type, uh, type of cards. Tapping five here, or we're gonna see an elemental and casting. Yep, there's an earth elemental and casting that maze of if. So this is really good for me because now Yoop cannot attack. Oh, there's a swords though. At least I'm gonna gain four life, gonna go back up to 15. But uh, yeah, wow, this was a good swords. Of course, he didn't play a single swords yet. So makes sense that he still has one. I wonder if he's gonna attack now. There's green for the first time, tapping a green and one. Oh, there's a Sylvan Library, really good for him. There's another Savannah line. The only good news for me here is that he doesn't have enough mana to also animate the factory and attack with both. So just attacking with the line, sending it back with the maze. The problem is that Sylvan is really good for you because he's still on 20, so he can use it quite aggressively. And if he can find um, an Armageddon, the game's over for me. Because look at my board state. I'll lose everything. I'll only have two Felwer Stones. So I got to cast a creature here. Tapping six. Sword of the Ages. Okay, well, that's something. But that's not going to help me. The Artifact from Legends. Passing the turn here. You looking at the top three cards. I got to keep my fingers crossed here. If he can find an Armageddon, it's probably game. So going through, taking one extra card, dropping to 16. He's really dominating this game so far. There's a forest. I mean, a Sarah Angel would be horrible as well, actually. First, he's going to attack. Makes sense. Let's see what I can do. 
Actually, that signals me that he doesn't have an Armageddon, because if he would have had an Armageddon, he would have cast it first before combat, because then it would lose the Maze of If. Oh, Sarah Angel, that is a problem. Of course, I got the Maze. What I need now is at least another Elemental, and then the Maze can, can deal with the Sarah. Okay, tapping a whole lot of mana again. Let's see what I can do. There's an Urza's Avenger. So Urza's Avenger is six to cast. It's from Antiquities. It is uh, actually a 4-4 four, four creature. And for zero, you can give it uh, Flying or Trample or First Strike. But every time you, you give it one of those abilities, it gets minus one, minus one. So it gets smaller. So the idea in this deck is that when I have Gravity Sphere, nothing flies. And Urza's Avenger can give itself flying and I can fly over the forces. But I mean, it's a 4-4. Four, four, so it's a good blocker for the Savannah Lines and the Mishra's Factory, I guess. And I've got the maze for the Sarah Angel. But I don't feel very confident, I have to admit. Uh, admit. Again, if you can find an Armageddon here, I am pretty much toast. So he's going to go here to 12, taking an extra card again. I mean, there's no pressure from me, so he can use his Sylvan quite aggressively. Tapping 2, are we going to see a Disenchant? No, we're going to see Felwer Stone. I thought maybe a Disenchant on the uh, Urza's Avenger. Three cards in hand. I feel very lucky that he hasn't found an Armageddon yet. Is he? Yeah, he is going to attack here. I'm sending it back, though. And I'm going to untap. Drawing a card for turn. Two cards in hand. What can I do? Putting the factory there on top. I'm sure I'm not going to attack with it though. No, just passing the turn. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. I mean, I'm kind of in this stage of the game hoping for, for example, a Gem Day Tome. You know, then at least I can draw some cards. And yeah, I just have to hope that Yoop again doesn't find that Armageddon. There's a disenchant. So I wonder if he's going to dis the Urza's Adventure. And then in response, I can use my sword. That's exactly what I do. So I sack the Urza's Adventure to the sword. Both cards will get exiled, but I can kill. Of course, the Sarah Angel, so at least get some value, but it also means I lose the sword. So that's, you know, one of my plan Bs to kind of win the game if the Gravity Sphere scheme uh, doesn't work. And talking about that, I mean, I cannot find Gravity Sphere, cannot find Flying Carpet. My deck is not really doing what it wants to do here, but hey, I'm still alive. Let's see what I can do in this game. Tapping five. Are we going to see an Elemental? Okay, there's a Fire Elemental 5-4 Powerhouse. I mean, that's five damage. I love the art, by the way. I think it's Melissa Benson, the Fire Elemental. Absolutely stunning card. And I believe maybe you should see more play. Although I think, to be honest, if I think Fire Elemental, Earth Elemental, I'm leaning more towards Earth Elemental because the five toughness is such a good buffer. It's really hard to get rid of for, for a lot of decks. Think about it. Bolt doesn't work, but also Psionic Blast doesn't work. Five is really like a big butt, you know, it's hard to get rid of. So the Fire Elemental with the 4 Toughness, a little bit easier to get rid of. And it looks like you here passing the turn. So we're both kind of uh, trying to find our key cards. Which is kind of interesting in, of course, this battle where, you know, Yoop's key card, of course, is Armageddon. And my key card here is Gravity Sphere and Flying Carpet. So I'm looking for two cards. Making it a little bit more tricky. Ooh, I'm going to attack here. That is a big surprise. Why am I attacking? Exactly, he can double block. It, it's going to cost him two creatures, yes. I guess I can use always the mace if I'm panicking here, but I wonder why I'm attacking. Blocking on two lions. So he's offering a trade here. Two Savannah lions. Taking it out of combat. Okay, so I guess uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do just to see what my opponent was going to do. Or perhaps I wanted Yoop to animate the factory. Oh, look at this. So I wanted him to animate the factory, but the factory can pump itself, though. So I guess I'm killing a lion and I'm killing the factory. So this is why I did it. I wanted you to animate the factory because that's pretty clever. Uh, clever, If I say so myself. Can you say that about your own place? <laughs> that's a bit nar narcissistic, isn't it? Anyway, I thought it was a good play. I think that card that I played, by the way, is called... Pyrotechnics or Pyrokinesis? I always mix those two names up, so I'm sorry. But what it does, it's a card from Legends, one red and four. And it deals four damage to any target. So you can divide the four, four damage any way you want. So uh, it's, qu it's quite a nice card. You don't see it that often. Attacking again here. 
animating the factory that he just cast. So it cannot pump itself. Again, double blocking, offering the trade. Again, I'm not taking the trade. Does it mean I have another way of getting rid of these creatures? Tapping six this time. Okay, fireball of six. So uh, yeah, I can kill both creatures with this fireball. And I mean, I kind of like this, the strategy I'm using. I've, I've not seen myself do this before where I attack. And of course, I've got the mace. I can always pull my creature back. But I just purely attack so that my opponent animates the factory so I can get rid of it. One of the hard things about factory is when it's not animated, it's quite difficult, you know, to get rid of with your sorcery speed spells. Anyway, here we see a lot of elves. Unless, of course, a sorcery speed elf, uh, sorcery speed spell is called ice storm or stone rain. Then it's a different story. Animating here, going for the full attack. I mean, it's looking I'm kind of taking over this game, by the way. Yuke not finding Armageddon, and I'm able to uh, kill a lot uh, a lot of his creatures. There's a disenchant on the factory, swinging in with my 5-4 fire elemental. And he's going to chump block it here. I think one of the reasons for him to chump block is because of that Sylvan, right? If he doesn't take the damage, it's basically a card for him. Oh, this is a spicy card. Or actually a janky card, I should say. Uh, Al Abara's Carpet. It's 5 to cast, 5 and tap. And all damage dealt to you by non-flying creatures is reduced to 0. And of course that works together really well with my Gravity Sphere. That I still don't have, by the way. It's somewhere in the deck. Playing only 2 copies. Maybe I should play 3. Anyway, passing the turn here to Yoop. And uh, you're going to drop here to 8. So let's see what he can do. He's on 8. Now all of a sudden it's looking really bad for him, right? I mean, for the longest of times this game won, I thought it would really go to yeah. Yoop. But um, the tables have changed. Ooh, and this is an Urnum Jin, And that Urnum Jin could end up biting him in the behind. Because, you know, Urnum Jin has to give Forest Walk to a creature during the upkeep. So that would be my Fire Elemental. And then it cannot be blocked. And I've got that Mace to send the Urnum back. So actually I can just pass turn here. That's exactly what I do. And now he has to give... That there's the coin to indicate the forest walk. He has to get forest walk to my only creature, which is the fire elemental. And then it can walk through his forest and deal five damage and put him on three. I mean, that, that's really a problem. He needs a sword. So he needs something. Okay, tapping two here. There's a disenchant. It's not really going to help him, is it? It's going to take care of a stone here, Felwer Stone. And there's an Armageddon. Okay, at least that's something, this Armageddon. I mean, is it too late, though? That's the question. So I'm going to use my all Abaros carpet in response to the Armageddon. Yeah, I've got to do something with the mana. But I'm going to lose my Maze of If. And now, of course, Yoop can block the Fire Elemental with his Urnum. So yeah, that's, uh, that's bad news for me. Finally... Yoop finding the uh, the Armageddon. The moment he disenchanted the Felwer Stone, I should have known, okay, there's an Armageddon coming. And there's a Pendlehaven. Really nice Pendlehaven world. There's Lanaware Elves. That's really nice synergy. So if you play Lanaware Elves, I would always like just put one Pendlehaven at least in the deck. There's a Hammerheim. Yeah, I mean, am I going to attack? Why would I? Remember, Pendlehaven is not a forest, so the forest walk is not really helping me here. Two cards in hand. One card in hand for my opponent. The only good news... Well, I guess, I mean, we're kind of in a, in, in a tie here, right? We're both in the same boat. At least I'm on 13 and he's on 8. I mean, Sylvan is a, gr is a great card, but I mean, it, it's also very costly, right? Four life for an extra card is pretty steep. Then again, it can make the difference between winning and losing. And you here playing a Plains, passing the turn. Okay, I'm finding a creature. That's pretty good. Attacking here now, offering the trade because they found that factory. You here taking the trade. So that means next turn, if all goes according to plan, which it probably won't, I can start attacking with my factory. But of course, Yoop knows this when deciding to, you know, to take the trade. Then again, if he wouldn't have taken the trade, he would have taken a hit of five. It would go down to three. I mean, that's not really an option for him also. So he's passing the turn here, it seems. Or not. I was looking at my hand, so I thought maybe he passed the turn. Ooh, he's going to take an extra card. This is risky. He's on four. What does he have here? Oh, this is so risky. 
does he have another Armageddon to kind of kill the factory? Oh, look at this. I'm not even attacking with the factory. I'm afraid of disenchants or swords. I'm just playing another fell. We're passing the turn. Wow, wow, wow. I wonder if maybe I have another X spell and I just want to play a fireball for four, for example, next turn or disintegrate. No. There's a forest. Okay, playing out the Lanora Elves. This is important because now he can block the factory. So maybe I kind of missed an opportunity there. Perhaps I should have attacked instead of playing the fell or just attack for two, put him on two. But then again, does that make a lot of difference whether he's on two or four? Remember, I'm not playing lightning bolts in this deck. Oh, there's a flying carpet. Okay, this is really, really funny. So one of the things I could do next turn, but it's a slow plan. I could animate my factory, put my factory on the carpet, fly over the elf, deal two points of damage, and then do that again to turn after killing my opponent. But again, this is a small, uh, a slow plan. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm still on 13 toes, though, so I can take a hit. Oh, he's actually attacking here, being aggressive, realizing that I can use the flying carpet. So he cannot block it anyway. So attacking me here, putting me on uh, on 11. Playing another Felwerstone. Wow. It's just Felwerstone after Felwerstone after Felwerstone for me. And again, I'm not even attacking. I'm afraid of... I guess I'm, 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 I'm afraid of the disenchant here, but I think I should just take the risk, right? I don't understand why I'm actually not attacking here. So, I mean... If I take the damage here, I should have attacked 200%. Or do I really want to protect that mana that my reasoning is, you know, if I have the mana, I think that's my reasoning here. I really want to keep that one mana from the factory. I wonder what I have in my hand that I'm really protecting this mana. Okay, tapping five. So I guess we're going to see now. Oh, there's an earthquake. Earthquake for four. Yep, that explains it. So I was working towards that Earthquake for four to eventually win the game. Or are we going to see a Swords to Plowshares here? Oh, we're going to see a Swords. He's not dead yet. He's on a one. He's on a one life. He's almost dead, but he's not dead. No more cards in hand, though. He's got to find a blocker here. And I mean, actually, he needs a flying blocker. The Urnum is good, but it, it's... I think I'm going to fly over the Urnum, win the game here. Game number one. Let's see what's going to happen. So I'm going to untap first, draw for turn. I'm sure I see this too, right? Let's animate, put it on the carpet. There's a mountain. Animating it. And putting it on the carpet. Oh man, I love this. It's so cool to see flying carpet, you know, being decisive in a game. It's just, uh, it's fantastic. You know, flying carpet is one of those cards that never sees any play. And I've said it before on the channel. You know, a lot of people only play with 5% of the old school card pool. There are so many cool and fun cards and fun things to do. You know, it's always cool to kind of try something new. And it usually means you're going to lose a few games. But when you win, it's such a good feeling. And this is just a great game one victory for me. You're flying carpet, winning the game here, game number one. But it's just the first game. We're going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Yup, of course, being on the play after losing that first game, starting here again with this Savannah Alliance. So that's a good start for him. I'm starting with a Mistress Factory tapping. Ooh, a Soul Ring. Yeah, that's my only one turn one play. So as soon as I'm tapping the land, I kind of know that the Soul Ring is coming, which is quite good for me, of course. There's a Pendle Haven. Let's see if he can play anything else. Oh, there's a Lana Word. That's pretty sweet for him. Attacking for two, putting me on 18. There is a mountain, so four mana to spend here. I don't think I can do a lot with just four mana. Oh, I can. There's a Falling Star. Oh, that's pretty sweet. That is nice. So Falling Star is a card you got to... It's like a mini Chaos Orb, right? You got to flip it from one foot. That's like 30 centimeters. And the targets it hits, they take three damage and they are tapped. Oh, look at that flip. That was pretty good. Pretty solid flip with the Falling Star, if I say so myself. Killing both creatures of Yoop. This is pretty huge, actually. This is a really sweet two for one. Let's see what he can do. Five cards in hand now after the draw. Tapping two. There's a Felwer Stone, at least. So he is ramping up a little bit. But I think 
losing, especially the Lanawar, is really annoying for him. He could pump the Lanawar with the Pendlehaven, and of course, it's nice ramp, so he could have played out, for example, an Urnum Jin. Now I've got five mana, probably an Elemental coming here. Yep, there's an Earth Elemental. I mean, Soul Ring is so good in my deck. Oh, but there's a Quick Swords to Plowshares, though. Does mean I'm going to go up uh, four life, going to go up to 22. But yeah, that was a really good answer. There's an Urnum. Ooh, now I'm in trouble. I love how swingy this game already is. You know, we just started. This is, I don't know, turn four, but it's so swingy. So many things are happening here. I now need to find an answer for the Urnum. Perhaps I can play another Elemental that could block. No, I can't passing the turn. This is bad for me. Four or five coming in, putting me on 18. Hmm, this is not great. Tapping five, Sarah Angel, four, four, Flyer. That doesn't have to tap when it attacks. Oh, I'm in trouble. That means eight damage next turn, potentially. There's a Fisher though. Probably yeah, Fishering the Sarah Angel. So Fisher, a card from the dark and instant, two red and three, destroy target creature or land. Oh, look at that. I'm actually killing the Urnum. Does that mean that I have a Fireball perhaps to take down the Sarah Angel? Another mountain. Tapping a lot again. What do I have? There's an Urza's Avenger. Okay, of course, the Urza's Avenger is a 4 4, so I can just attack and maybe he's going to take the trade. I don't think so. Why would you trade that for a Sarah Angel? There's a Lana where else attacking for 4 here. Look at that, dropping to 14. This is not good. I mean, I think I should just attack here with the Urza's Avenger anyway. There's a flying carpet. Okay, so I can give my Urza's Adventure flying, blocking the Sarah with it next turn. Oh, there's actually not a flying carpet, it's a flower stone. Okay, I was wishful thinking, I guess. I thought, okay, there's the flying carpet. Okay, okay, okay. So I took it back. I thought, hey, what happened to the flying carpet? Okay, it's still there, passing the turn. So now I wonder if you're Yoop, do you really want to take this trade? I mean, it's not, it's not great, right? I mean, if he has a disenchant, he can just disenchant the adventure. It's all over. But if he doesn't, I mean, maybe he's not going to attack. Tapping four. There's an Urnum. Okay, now he could consider attacking because he's got a creature more. No, he's not. I get it. I get it. You don't want to trade your Urza's, your Sarah Angel for an Urza's adventure. That kind of feels bad. Although the Urza has six to cast, you know, it's still, it's still a good trade from that perspective. There's a Wall of Fire. Okay, this Wall of Fire can stop the Urnum Jin. Okay, I'm... That's pretty good. So it seems uh, we're a little stuck here. And my Urza's Adventure gaining Forest Walk, but remember he doesn't have any Forest because he has a Pendlehaven and a Lunnower Elves to make green mana, so he doesn't need to play a Forest. Two cards in hand, passing the turn. I've got one card in hand. Gonna go up to two now, I guess. I mean, if I can find a way to get rid of the Angel, I mean, I can just fly over. Tapping five, okay, what do I have? Earth Elemental would be good too. Oh, there is a, a Mirror Universe. I'm tapping six, of course, because that, uh, that one artifact is a Soul Ring. So Mirror Universe, I can swap life totals during the upkeep. Do I want to right now? I mean, the funny thing is I am playing with, uh, with Direct Damage, so I could play like a Fireball on myself. Look at this, using the Mirror Universe. We're trading. I mean, I'm going up six life. He's going down six life. So it's 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 a change of 12, which is decent. Two cards in hand. I guess, by the way, that Mirror Universe doesn't really fit a budget build. So sorry for that. But it does really work well in my, in my red deck. Because sometimes my red deck is so slow. Look at this. I'm attacking. Why, why am I attacking? Why am I attacking? There are no forests. Do I think the Pendlehaven is a forest? Do I have some kind of trick? I guess I got a trick. I don't. So he's blocking with the Urnum. I think I'm thinking... Oh god, okay. Or do I perhaps have the Pyrotechnics or something? No, I think this was just a mistake from my side. Wow, that is sloppy. I probably thought that he had a forest for some reason, because it didn't detect prior, so that's funny, but... Wow, this actually makes a pretty big change in the game. 
this is bad. But I'm actually, and I'm sure Yup was like, you can take it back. But I'm like, no, no, no. I need to feel, I need to be punished. You know, I'm making a mistake. I need to get better at this. I'm sloppy. Kill my adventure. It is what it is. I mean, these are kind of, you know, casual games, of course. But still, I, I feel like I want to feel the pain so then I don't do it again. So, uh, but this is hard to look at this, this mistake. I'm sure I, I, I thought for some reason that he had a force, so I thought with force walk it couldn't be blocked. I'm now going to give my uh, wall of fire flying, and I can block the Sarah Angel. I cannot kill it, though, because I only have three red, so I can make it a 3-5. So uh, that's it. So I guess he was just attacking with the Sarah Angel to see what I would do. There's another Mistress Factory. So I've got three now. I can make a pretty huge factory to block with. Wow, taking it back. Okay. I've already given that information, though, to my opponent. Passing the turn. Ain't, why am I not playing out that... I'm afraid, I guess, of the... Of the Armageddon, then? That's a reason for not playing it out? There's the attack. So I think he's attacking now with the Urnum and the Sarah Angel, perhaps. Putting some pressure on. Let's see what I'm going to do. I'm a little bit into tank here. I wonder what kind of cards I have. Tapping a Felwer. Oh, I'm going to animate. I'm going to double block to try to kill it. Ah, I see. Okay, so I'm going to double block. Make it a 3-5. Make this a 3-3. Three, three, so I can deal 6 damage. He can only kill one creature. In this case, he can kill the factory. Also pumping the factory, by the way. Not sure if that's necessary, but okay. And he didn't attack with the Sarah. Oh, that's kind of odd. A lot of odd things happening here. I just assumed he would also attack with the Sarah. Choosing not to, though. Because then it would have taken an, an extra four points of damage. Anyway, um, it is what it is. Another mountain played and a pass turn here to my opponent. I believe. He's going to tap a white. Oh, this is bad. Going to kill my wall of fire. I mean, I can pump a lot of red in it. Make some life at least. I guess that's what I'm going to do. So that means 4 life for me. Going to go up to 24. But this is really bad. Yeah, it's going to swing in. Going to take my 4 life. So I'm going to go back to 20. He's not going to attack with the uh, lines because I still have that Mistress Factory there. But yeah, this is really bad. Playing out the other factory that I uh, had in hand for a while, I believe. And I mean, I'm very vulnerable here to an Armageddon. Very vulnerable. Kind of reminds me of game 1. But it's looking really good for you here in game number two. So then he would tie the game here to a 1-1. One, one. Yep, drawing card for turn. Tapping four. Okay, there's a gem day tome. So at least that can draw me some cards. I mean, I'm still pretty high up in life, right? And I guess Yoop doesn't want to attack with the Angel because then I'm going to trade it for a factory, right? Because I can give it flying, animate it, and I can uh, pump it with the other one. So then it would have a 4-4. Four, four. Do I actually have enough mana to do that? I don't think I do. Oh, look at that. That's kind of an alpha strike here. Attacking with everything. Animating a factory. Giving it flying. Make it a 3-3 three, three, and pumping it up. So I'm... Exchanging a factory here for a Sarah Angel. It does mean that they don't have enough mana to also draw a card. I think this is the reasoning of my opponent here thinking, I'm just going to swing in. If he trades the Angel, fine. But, you know, it does mean that I can deal, in this case, five points of damage because of that Pendlehaven and also that he doesn't draw an extra card. So I get the reasoning. There's actually a pretty decent exchange here for Yoop. Because, and I'm losing a factory and I'm not drawing a card and he's dealing five damage. So at first glance, you would think trading a Sarah for a factory is not good, but I think in this scenario, it is. I think he made a good decision. Passing the turn here, untapping uh, all my stuff or what's left of it. I'm on 15, still pretty high up. Let's hope I can find an elemental, something to block with. Drawing a card for turn, okay. 
That's usually not a good sign <laughs> if you're doing that. It means you cannot find anything else. Hey, tapping five, an elemental. Okay, that is pretty sweet. Four, five. So this is difficult again for Yupa. I mean, if he attacks, now he's going to lose a creature to deal a little bit of damage. Which is not ideal, but then again, I mean, he wants to put pressure on. I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, he's got, so double Lanawar Elves, got Savannah Lines, and he's got a Mishra's Factory, four cards in hand. He's got that Pendlehaven, of course, but yeah, I don't see him attacking unless he's got a Swords here. He is tapping a White, so who knows? Oh, he's going to animate. Look at that, attacking with everything. I didn't see this coming. He's attacking with everything. I'm tapped out. I mean, I guess I'm going to block with the Earth Elemental, right? I mean, he doesn't play with Giant Grove, I believe. There's a block, probably block in the factory. No, I'm not. Actually, block in the Lions. Probably because he's playing with Armageddon himself. So my reasoning here is he's going to destroy his own Armageddon. He now is dealing five damage again. And there's an Armageddon. Okay, wow. Wow, interesting. I mean, I do still have the Earth Elemental. Okay, there's another factory. That kind of explains it. You know, if I attack, of course, my Earth Elemental taps, and then he can swing back for four, and I'm on a lower life total. So it is a risky plan that he's taken, but also understandable. And also, he, he took my, my book offline, and my Felber Stone doesn't work because he only has uh, a Mishra's factory. So that makes colorless mana. So that doesn't work. Anyway, tapping three here. Finding a shatter. Oh, that's really good. I can shatter the soul ring, meaning he has no mana. Oh, he does have mana because of the Felwer Stone. Ah, that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. I won't say he doesn't have any mana to animate the factory, but he does. Because the Felwer Stone, his Felwer Stone cannot make red mana. My Felwer Stone doesn't work. He's got four mana, you know. If he can cast and earn him. Okay, there's a forest. There's a book of his own. Okay, okay. I can at least swing in now for 4, put him on 10. The question is, do I want to? I think I want to. Because then if he, if he attacks me back, then, you know, at least he cannot draw a card. Uh, I don't know. Okay, there's a strip mine. That's good. I can strip the factory. They don't have to do it now, of course. Yeah, I seem to be a little bit in the tank here. Okay, I am doing it now. Interesting. Tapping four. Okay, using the book, drawing an extra card. Gonna swing in for four, put him on ten. Passing the turn. Okay, it's decent. I'm not complaining. I'm seeing options here in this game. We're both on ten. A real nil biter here. Here's drawing a card. We both have a book. Going to attack me for one, put me on nine. But hey, I'm going a little bit faster, of course, with my Earth Elemental. What can I do here? Am I going to swing in? There I go, putting him on six. Ooh, he's on a two-turn clock. There's a Shatter. Oh, this is looking really bad for you. Good for me, though. Am I going to win this match with a 2-0 victory? That is the question. He needs to find some answers here. Armageddon was risky, but I did like his game plan. I think it was solid at the time he was on a higher life total. He does have some chum blocking to go. Ooh, is he going to tap four for an Urnum? For a moment, it looked like he was going to, right? But he's not. Maybe he really needs a white, uh, white source here. And of course, I can also give my Earth Elemental flying. I wonder if I see that. It looks like I'm not really focused on, on that aspect at the moment. I think I should put it on the, on the flying carpet. Or maybe I want to keep the mana to draw more cards with the book. Passing the turn. This is a big surprise. This is a big surprise. Why am I playing so defensively? I should have just attacked here. There's a Felwer Stone. This surprises me, to be honest. Could there be a reason here not to attack? Using the book. 
Maybe my reasoning is I'm drawing more cards anyway because of the book, so I might as well keep the stalemate going on a little bit longer. But then again, I mean, I only need two hits in. I've got the flying carpet. I mean, come on, you know. There's a maze of if. Yeah, now, of course, I'm finding, you know, more answers. Ooh, I, I think I'm forgetting to use my carpet here. There's a chump. One of the things that you could have done is, of course, animate the factory, you know, put the three creatures in front, but perhaps he's concerned that, you know, I have maybe a shatter in hand, and that's why I'm not putting the earth elemental on the carpet that I want him to, to try to do the triple block. Maybe I do. Maybe that's the reason. Tapping five. Is there going to be another creature? Oh, there's the, the pyrotechnics here dealing a damage. And three damage here to Yoop. Oh, this is so tough for him. He's down to three. Could have already won the game here if I would have put my Earth Elemental on the carpet. It looks like it's the end of the road here for my opponent. Needs a little miracle here now. He's on three. This is really tough. The question is, am I going to see that I've got my flying carpet? Yes, finally. Poo poo, that took a long time. <laughs> okay, Earth Elemental flying over my opponent again. I can't believe it. Earth Elemental winning games for me. Uh, I, I have to say flying carpet. I mean, winning games for me in game one and now in game two. That is epic. Uh, I Thank you very much uh, for, for checking this game out. Don't go away yet, though, because we did play a game number three. So uh, if you want to, you can check that one out as well. Game number three. Let's see if you can at least, you know, get a win out. I felt that he was close, though, in game two with that Armageddon, kind of like a 50-50 situation there. I happened to uh, to keep the book, and look at that. He's actually started with a double mulligan, and uh, that's not good. Playing a Felwer here, four cards in hand, passing to turn to me. Let's see if I can also find a Felwer because I'm tapping two mana. So it could be a Felwer stone action from both of us. Nope, there's a Shatter taking care of the stone here of my opponent. Passing to turn, and Yoop here playing a lot of Elves. It looks like he's missing uh, white mana. Only three cards in hand for him. Next turn, potentially, he could play out a, um, an Urnum Jin, of course. Tapping two again here. A Felwer Stone. Okay, tapping the Felwer Stone. Animating the factory. And, of course, I'm animating the factory that didn't have summoning sickness, just to clarify. Attacking here my opponent, putting Yoop on 18. And, ooh, tapping four. There's the Urnum. Okay, the Urnum Jin 4 5 Powerhouse. This is the Chronicles Edition original set Arabian Nights, by many considered the greatest set of all times. Tapping 5 mana here. What are we going to see? Earth Elemental. And that can, of course, bounce back on the Urnum. The problem here, though, is that uh, Yoop has to give my, uh, my Earth Elemental Forest Walk. That's why, why the coin goes on there, indicating the Forest Walk from the Urnum. There's a Sylvan. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Now, I guess because he played the Sylvan, I'm going to be aggressive with the Earth Elemental. Because remember, Sylvan gives you the ability to draw extra cards, but it's going to cost you four life. And the Earth Elemental has a power of four. So I'm going to attack here the life total of my opponent, putting Yoop on 14. Another Elemental, Fire Elemental here. Oh, man, this is tough for Yoop. A lot of pressure here from me. Just a lot of big Elementals hitting the board. That is difficult to answer, of course. He needs a white mana here. And, of course, a swords. That will be great for him. Really needs to, to dig. Find a white source. Look at that. Taking an extra card. Going to 10. Ooh. Does that mean that he's found perhaps a planes and a sword? Like, bam, bam. You know, that he can take care of one of the two elementals. Nope. There's an, another forest. Ay, 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 ay. This is not looking good here for you. Not finding the cards he needs. Passing the turn. Let's see what I can do. Five cards in hand. I mean, I can just attack with both elementals, see what he does. I mean, I'm pretty sure that he then's going to trade perhaps for the fire elemental. And then I still have those two factories. I can start attacking with that as well. Exactly. Just be aggressive. Yeah, he's taking the trade here. So losing fire elemental, but he's losing the urnum and taking a hit of four. Down to six. Tapping five. Oh, another elemental. This is brutal. This is brutal. Even without playing the other elemental, it would have been really, really like a good board state for me. But now with that added earth elemental, finally finding a white source though, are we going to see a source here? Or perhaps 
a balance, although, I mean, the thing is with balance, it doesn't solve the problem with the Mishra's factories, and also he still has a lot of elves. So he just, I mean, he needs at least the swords. Okay, Savannah lines. Okay, this is a chump blocker, right? So it's something, of course, my Earth Elemental loses Forest Walk, by the way, so I should remove the coin because the, the Urnum is gone. Let's see when that sings in. Animating a factory here. Yeah, exactly. Coin's gonna go. No longer has Forest Walk. Attacking your Mishra's factory. Two Earth Elementals. Yeah, I mean, look at that. He's gonna chump. I can pump the factory exactly, dealing three points of damage. Yoop dropping here to, to three. The only thing that could kind of work for him here is a balance. And then also a creature. He needs a balance and a creature. That could kind of get him back into it. Nope, that's it. Look at that cleaning up my pile. Ay, 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 ay. I mean, it's just not meant to be. Uh, he had the Armageddon showing that, but yeah, that's not going to help him here because of those Earth Elementals. Too many Elementals in this game three. This was truly an Elemental walkover, which is pretty sweet to see. Um, thank you, you for the games. Unfortunately, in this one, your deck didn't really get to work. But like I said in the introduction, I've seen this Urnum Ganon deck do great things. And, uh, you know, I think it's a strong deck. It's a great deck to play if you're on a, on a budget. And again, you can also play my deck on a pretty budget-friendly uh, friendly, uh, version. You probably take out the Mirror Universe, but it's not that necessary in the deck. And you can get a lot of Italian Legends cards. For example, Gravity Sphere, Italian Legends. It's not as expensive. So, yeah, you can, you can make this deck uh, budget-friendly as well. Anyway, uh, for this, uh, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Another thing you can do is becoming a subscriber. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, thank you for doing that. And then there's one last thing I want to share with you, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and you can find out how you can become a patron of the channel. And when you're a patron, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.